Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in East Bumblefuck, New Mexico on this over-the-top gorgeous spring morning, Friday morning, March 10th, 2017. So I'm in the middle of this week's ecological meltdown roundup round where I simply open up my email box to get all my various environmental media roundups of the week to share with you and I just finished part one uh, in a separate rant which was the Trump version of my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I went and looked at how Donald Trump and his <clears throat> horsemen of the apocalypse are bringing this planet into a brick wall at 77,000 miles an hour. So in part two, I'm just going to, we're going to slow down a little bit to 67,000 miles an hour and just see how this planet is slamming into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour if Donald Trump had never been elected. So we're just going to go right through the same that we did, uh, same list that we did in part one, but we're going to end up uh, over at Manga Bay. But before we get to Manga Bay's romp around a collapse, a Trump-free romp around a collapsing planet, let's see if the Washington Post came up with anything this entire week not about... Uh, Donald Trump, and I already, this is one of the major stories I talked about Wednesday, but it certainly bears repeating. Uh, by 2030, half the world's oceans could be reeling from climate change, scientists say. Uh, now, of course, as I said on Wednesday, uh, by by April of 2017, 100% of the oceans could be reeling from climate change. Uh, okay, I, is this the second? This is the second and only other story out of the Washington Post entire environment uh, death not about Donald Trump. After court rulings, wolves ruling wolves could soon be shot on sight in Wyoming, as the court cited in in favor of a state wolf management plans that treats the animals as vermin. There you go. That is the state wildlife management. Wolves are vermin. And those were the two stories, not about Donald Trump. So let's go over here to Center for Biological Diversity. Uh, see if they have any stories, not about Donald Trump. There we go. Let's go over to the good old state of Texas. This recurring rant I have had every single year going on for six years now. Thousands urge Texas to end wildlife gassing. This is uh, common, commonly called gassing, this indiscriminate hunting method. This is where they, they pour gasoline down what they hope are rattlesnake holes in Texas to have these bullshit rattlesnake roundups bunch of those goddamn Trump supporting rednecks in Texas thinking this is sport and entertainment. So they just indiscriminately, any hole in the ground they see, they pour a gallon of gasoline down the ground to try to route out a, a rattlesnake. But unfortunately, this completely indiscriminate hunting, meth hunting method also harms uh, habitats and non-target wildlife, including endangered species living in the holes and crevices along with the rattlesnakes. 
Jesus, you know, this, just the fact that rattlesnake gassing is still going on on this planet. You know, if, if we need to see one more excuse why it's time uh, for humans to get gassed off of this planet. Jesus, people. Uh, this is their spin on the story I just mentioned from the Post. Ruling allows for widespread killing of Wyoming wolves. Uh, there you go. Somber news for gray wolves in Wyoming. Uh, the wolves' protections have, for all intents and purposes, now been handed over to the state which promotes unlimited wolf killing across most of Wyoming. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And then they link you to the Washington Post story. Uh, okay, as I say, this does not involve Donald Trump directly, but it will soon. Utah rep proposes $50 million plan to seize public lands. This is this goddamn planet eater. Utah Republican uh, Rob Bishop has released his latest plan to seize, dismantle, and privatize America's public lands. His budget request, whose price tag for taxpayers is $50 million, calls for relinquishing public lands to states and private interests for unfettered drilling, fracking, mining, grazing, and development, all of which would worsen climate change, degrade our landscapes, and hurt wildlife. This is quoting the Senator's Randy Spivak. Uh, Representative Bishop is sadly mistaken if he thinks the public is going to stand by and watch him destroy our national forest, wildlife refuge, and other man magnificent public lands. That's exactly what they're going to do. The public is just going to stand and say, what the, what the fuck do you think the public, the, the tiny, tiny uh, few members of the public who are uh, even aware of this, what the fuck are you going to do about it, uh, especially uh, with these, these goddamn planet eaters taking over Washington? And... Uh, then they're asking you to please take a moment to speak up for North Cascades grizzly bears. <clears throat> we pause for a moment in the middle of this rant to speak up. You rock North Cascades grizzly bears. You rock. We got your back, brother. We're with you. Okay, now that I have taken action to save the grizzly bears of the North Cascades, let me move on from the Center for Biological Diversity to over there to Alternet to see if they have any stories. Uh, I mentioned uh, this story, I believe, last week. Your tax dollars are at work paying to terrorize wild horses with helicopters. And the, these cruel roundups are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to suffering and death for America's iconic wild horses. Here are the three main challenges facing U.S. agriculture over the next 50 years. Luckily, there's an inexpensive and easy to use solution. Soil. What a concept. Soil. D -d 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 -d. I think this is the third week in a row they've had this no shit Sherlock story. If you missed it the last two weeks, 
pollution responsible for a quarter of deaths of young children, says World Health Organizations. I love the, uh, the when they ask a headline and a question, can humans truly connect with nature by eating a Big Mac? A recent essay titled Toward a Moral Case for Meat Eating has attracted a lot of attention. I will probably come back at you with uh, quoting this essay Toward a Moral Case for Meat Eating in a later rant, but I need to move on. Uh, here, what's going on with good old Governor Cuomo in New York? Governor Cuomo trashes New York City's plastic bag fee law. The state's action is a setback for litter reduction in clean water and a reprieve for the plastic bag industry. Yep, and we're going to finish up alternates romp around a collapsing planet in Australia. I mentioned this in my Wednesday climate change rant. Irreversible climate change impacts ravage Australia. Record high temperatures this Australian summer have caused widespread coral bleaching, habitat destruction, and species mortality. And you better believe the forecast for Australia is more of the same over the 21st century. Okay, for the balance of this rant, we are going to turn to my number one favorite environmental roundup rant from the good folks at mongabay.com who never mention Donald Trump in their roundup of stories this week. So thank you, Manga Bay, for giving us a break from Donald Trump. But let's see, even without any help, from Donald Trump, how Manga Bay is bringing us news of how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. Okay, leading off, leading off the pack is the question being asked in the headline, does the Amazon soy moratorium. Take Does the Amazon soy moratorium do enough to advance sustainability? <laughs> if if uh, I, I, I is is it there? Manga Bay is acting like this question is even up for debate. Okay. You know, it's it, it, the question is unanswerable because it's patently absurd. It's kind of like, somewhat like the question, have you stopped beating your wife? Uh, guys, there is no Amazon soy moratorium. Pull your head out of your ass. I, I, anyway... Uh, Amazon soy moratorium. Good God almighty. From that hilarious headline to this not so uh, hilarious headline. Trapped elephants face attacks by mobs in India. The herd of about 25 elephants has, has found itself trapped within dense human habitation, you know, in an area uh, that used to have no humans. Uh, and no shit Sherlock, uh, conservationists say that humans harassing 
the elephants has now become a form of entertainment for the clueless fucking morons in the area. 25 more elephants you can uh, you can kiss goodbye off this planet. Okay. Wow. I don't even know if this one is worth reaching for the no shit Sherlock, Sherlock button. Cattle industry lags behind in addressing its impact on deforestation. Huh. <coughs> Do you think so? While consumers are increasingly pushing for deforestation-free palm oil and other products, consumer pressure for change in the cattle industry hasn't been so significant. Here is Greenpeace and the Indonesian Forestry Ministry heading to court. We all know where that one is heading. Here is the notorious elephant poacher known as the Devil, sentenced to 12 years in jail. Uh, Jesus. Good, I guess that's some good news. All right, here is, I guess, I guess this is for people with a dark, ironic, twisted sense of humor, such as myself. Industry-backed oil palm plantation museum opens in Indonesia. <laughs> I, 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 I can imagine. Uh, what that corporate greenwashing looks like. Okay, what's going on there in Ecuador? I guess they have a new president in Ecuador. Damn it. You know, I have enjoyed ranting about my number one planet eater that I love to hate until Donald Trump came along, uh, Rafael Correa. Uh, oh well, I guess Rafael Correa is hitting the the speak, speaking and book tour circuit. But just because that little uh, planet-eating maggot is, is, is out of power, don't think anything has changed in Ecuador as we see this no-shit Sherlock story. In Ecuador, progress stalls on mining dispute between government and indigenous Shuar people. Yes. Uh, the Shuar people say they feel they are being besieged by the presence of the Ecuadorian military you know, otherwise known as the military arm of the global industrial economy. Who the fuck do you think the Ecuadorian military is going to protect? Is it the indigenous people of Ecuador? Who, or is it the multinational mining conglomerates uh, wreaking havoc on the uh, indigenous people's uh, ancestral homelands. Uh, that, that's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, who the hell the Ecuadorian uh, government or the Peruvian government or the fucking U.S. federal government going up there to Standing Rock. Oh, boy. Here is their spin on this story that I let off a rant with a few days ago. Poachers kill rhino inside French zoo. This is just, you know, this story. It's kind of like that dolphin killing story at the cove. If we can no longer keep a critically endangered species from being massacred inside zoos, 
this this was in 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 Paris, France. There is nowhere from this point forward, guys, on this planet left that's safe from from these evil fuckers. Just the the whole consciousness of humans in the year 2017 has reached such a despicable point. You know, it is a sad day on the planet. Uh, we we started off, uh, Magabe starts off that rant with their hilarious debate about soy growing in the Amazon jungle, but don't forget the Brazilian savanna and the Bolivian rainforest are also both at risk from soy productions. Uh, <clears throat> soybeans, which make up the main feed for livestock that supply fast food chains such as Burger King, now occupy almost 386,000 square miles of, of land around the world. Huh. This newest report focuses on the massive soy purchase operations of multinational agricultural corporations such as Cargill, Bunge, and Archer's Daniels Midland. Oh, Jesus. Here is meet the almost famous animals that deserve more conservation recognition. Yep. We were just talking about the last elephants in this in this elephant herd in India which are not even living in a national park. So now let's go over to inside a national park in Cambodia looking at the last elephants of Cambodia's Virache National Park. Uh, there you go. Economic land concessions have chipped away at the area of the park that borders Vietnam while illegal logging takes place throughout Vera Shea and every other protected area in Cambodia and poaching is rife. Uh, here is, let's go over there to a volcano in the Cameroon. Good Lord, where we find nearly half of Mount Oku's frogs are in danger of croaking. The frogs are vanishing and no one knows why. Some species may already be extinct. And uh, from a volcano in Cameroon to the Christmas Islands, looking at the lizards of Christmas Island, of the Christmas Islands. In the 1990s, most of Christmas Island's lizard species began plummeting, and the cause remains a mystery. One species has already gone extinct, and another is extirpated from one island, but still can be found elsewhere. Researchers will not be able to introduce captive species until the cause of the mysterious decline is uncovered. Uh, guys, do you get it from volcanoes in the Cameroon to islands out in the middle of nowhere? Uh, 
Oh, Jesus. Here is the no shit Sherlock story. Japanese and Singapore banks finance controversial Indonesian coal plant. Yes, the project has been the target of years of protests from both local and international activists. But anyone who thinks that's going to stop these goddamn bankers behind it all, from Asia right back here to the good old uh, eastern United States, many tree species in the eastern U.S. may not be able to adapt to a changing climate. So what are the trees most vulnerable to global warming? In the eastern U.S., we have the balsam fir, the quaking aspen, I thought that was the western U.S., the black cherry, the yellow birch, the red maple, the sugar maple, and the red spruce are among the most vulnerable species to warming temperatures. Here is a story looking at where the forest giants went. They went into oblivion. Oh God, uh, here is how nitrogen pollution slows down forest decomposers. How this is the soil fungi uh, being taken out from this goddamn nitrogen pollution. <coughs> I'm not even going to waste my time on this absurd headline about Rwanda saving the planet. Uh, Let's see, guys, where, uh, I don't know where I am in time. We were just talking about these, these frogs in, uh, in the Cameroon, and now we're looking at this frog in Tanzania. It has barely been discovered, and it is already facing distinction. Oh, here is deforestation versus degradation, how we undermine tropical forest greenhouse gas emissions, underestimate tropical forest greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Researchers calculated carbon dioxide emissions from tropical forest degradation <clears throat> from logging, is what they're talking about, uh, from 74 countries focusing on global warming uh, effects of timber harvesting, wood fuel collection, and fires. Uh, there you go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to, this, this is as good a place as any. I could go on and on with this, but it is a beautiful day in uh, the end times, and I want to get out and enjoy it, and I need to prepare for my first Humpty Dumpty Tribe interview ever with my Humpty Dumpty Tribe hero, Carolyn Baker, which... Uh, I will be having in a couple of hours, and be sure you turn in to tune into that for this rant, for the Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant Part 2. Bye, guys.